Hello everyone, so today we will talk about this kit from Minyard. As you can see, it's a uh, kit number 37089, and this is a T34, so it might be familiar to some of you, but uh, as you remember, we also reviewed this kit, but it will be interesting to see how it actually assembles together. So that's the same kit what was reviewed in the video review, and I can even show the marking options here. So there are five of them, if you don't remember, and they should be quite interesting to copy, but this time we will be working on something different. So that will be the kit without any marking option on it. So decals will be basically unused. And by the way, here you can see also the glue which I took with me. But we will try to assemble this kit in a full plastic only in order to check the fitment, to check the quality and see how it works together. So let's start. So of course we are going to start with assembly manual and here you can see that it's a standard minor brochure. We also checked all pages in the video review but in this video we will be also talking in a bit more detail and here on the first page you get two marking options you also get the parts map and note that this parts map it does not show any unused parts so pay attention because there are a lot of spare parts and you will see it when you will be building this model especially here you can see a lot of spare stuff which is given in several versions but first step actually involves here the lower hull section it's actually the floor of the tank as you can see even the escape hatch here is molded separately which is quite surprising and you can see it here from the opposite side so don't be confused that it's just a half and then we install the firewall for the engine bay but as you remember we are dealing with the kit without any interior parts so it will be empty inside but some others will be happy because it will give them a bit more time to focus on the outer features and here we start working on this uh, suspension parts as well as the side panels for the main hull so it will be interesting how it all goes together and we can start right now So next step involves installation of these tiny parts and you can see that we have a alignment element somewhere here so it will be installed properly no worries and it won't intrude with the side panels of the lower hull uh, section as you can see here. Note that the rear part or rear counterpart let's say of this element is represented with this double so basically you install it it will make it easier to install it here because as you can see it is interconnected and it covers two places at the same time. So with the firewall it gets a bit more interesting because here you can see the part and we have these three installation points and they will go inside these steps so they will be precisely aligned and you shouldn't be worried that they will not stand. I mean here you can see the dry fitment and it's more or less fine so you just need to apply a bit of glue and it will be completely okay. Just a small reminder that here it will be empty, there is no engine because it's not an interior kit but we will see the overall fitment anyway because we will be assembling these hull parts. So let's do it. So this thing I decided to show a bit uh, more closer, let's say. So you can see it's a dry fitment with a side wall of the main hull. It's not glued in place, but thanks uh, to this, as you can see, guiding system, it just stands still even if I tilt it uh, downwards 
and now you can see it's a true dry fit there is no trickery and this panel is supplied as a one piece part inside you will have to glue in these uh, shock absorbers and also these tabs they are also separate so you install them one by one but it's not a difficult task especially if you have a tools unlike me uh, because i'm here i remind you that this is a travel build so that's why i have only this cutter and this paper knife but still it is quite doable you can see also this um, a lot of now uh, extra plastic uh, side but i would really like how the overall fitment works here and by the way here is another shock absorber let's say container as you can see here we install this shock absorber it won't be visible so it's up to you whether you would like to paint it or not but it gets installed here and it will be also quite a nice fit so now all i need to do is to glue all these things into the right spot and this side wall will be ready so here I just wanted to show you another example of the dry fitment because this sidewall is not uh, glued to the floor but you can see that a lot of attachment elements here or guiding elements here and also the uh, firewall as you can see it gets inserted into special tabs it gets you a really nice fitment it's not glued so that's why we have a small gap here but it will be fixed when it will be glued and by the way you can see the shock absorbers through these holes so pay attention to that it might be an important thing and it might be noticeable on your finished model but now what we have to do is to assemble the opposite wall and glue them both into the place so here you can see both panels ready, they will be installed from both sides of this tank and frankly speaking fitment is quite nice, I did not encounter any possible issues, do not forget that I have the basic tool set, so I guess professional modelers will have even better time because they will have all the necessary tools but please be careful and track where you have to drill holes because it will be necessary and there are some let's say spots which won't be possible to drill later so that's why it is important to read what you have on your assembly manual and repeat these steps in exact sequence so now let's install this one and this panel on both sides in order to get a lower house section so we continue our build and here you can see this uh, top hull section ready well basically it's not ready obviously but uh, this glacis plate was glued into this top section and you can see that engine bay cover is molded separately we'll talk about it a bit later here you can take a closer look and what we will have to do next is to place this part here on the lower hull section and then glue it into the place so as you can see fitment is more or less nice it's just a matter of pushing some spots into the place i don't think it will be a difficult task and then what we will have to do is to install this engine bay cover also install this rear armor wall and maybe of course the driver's hatch i plan to open it even though we have emptiness inside and note how cramped was this uh, let's say fighting compartment all this section was taken by the engine and it looks really impressive in my opinion so now let's glue this part into place by the way you can see that i let's say punched out the holes because as i said i'm doing it with the basic tool set so i do not have a drill beads and there are a lot of holes to drill moreover there are some let's say configurations that are dependent on the marking option you choose so pay attention to this do not drill the wrong holes because wait it will be difficult to fix and as i said now we will start gluing this part into the right spot here is another interesting moment so these are the suspension arms and here is the uh, hull assembled and here you can see that the front section of this uh, suspension arm is fixed with help of tab but when you get it in place it will be moving there i'm not sure if i will be able to show you it with one hand but you get the overall idea there is enough of space for that so oops i mean uh, there is enough space so that parts uh, move and i will try to show it in a second just give me a moment as you remember there was a tab which is supposed to hold it in place and you can see i have it slided in but there is this movement inside so it's a plenty of movement that's why i would rather recommend to install all this let's say fixed parts 
first so that you get the overall idea of the uh, wheels alignment and then you get this nose or front section in the place because otherwise you might end up with a road wheels in a different height and it will be a bit weird looking assembly. So here I would like to show you a quite interesting feature. You can see this, uh, let's say, lower plate of the turret pre-assembled. And here we have this uh, first, let's say, base part of the gun mask. And it should be installed, as far as you can see, like this. But what is quite interesting here is that the fitment is quite impressive. So just give me a second. I will try to align it with the necessary gaps. And here you can see it. So it sits almost flush, you can see it's a dry fit and still we do not have any possible issues here and that's really impressive in my opinion. So we will see how the whole turret will look like, but this is quite cool and I thought that you should see it as well. So here you can see the another dry fitment of this main gun. It's a section which will be inside the turret, but you can see how perfectly it fits. And the only thing which is left is to attach the machine gun from one side. Of course, the main barrel is here. We will talk about it later because it's quite interesting molding as well. But this looks quite good in my opinion. Here I would like to show you the small funny mistake. Because as you can see here, these side panels, they get inserted into the turret. And there is nothing wrong with this. But note that we have top panel in place. Nevertheless, on the next page, you will see the top panel gets installed, which is quite funny. I mean, it's not a serious issue. Obviously, you understand what to do, but do not get confused by this present here and then get it installed on the next step. You get to install it on the next step, and that's where it will be installed on the top of this one piece section of the turret. So here you can see all the necessary parts for assembly of the turret, and basically, it, let's say, uh, shows all the big parts. Obviously, there will be smaller parts as well. And there will be some P implemented here on the outer shell of the uh, turret. Obviously, we do not have any interior because we have a version without interior. But still, you can see that there are a lot of uh, parts to be combined together. And I'm going to see how it fits together. And I will report right after gluing all this stuff into one beautiful turret. So let's start. Small note should be given about the sequence of the assembly. So as I said before here, a manual shows that we insert the side panels when the top panel is in the place. And that's what I decided to follow because when you insert the side panels on um, this shell without the top panel, you get, uh, let's say, not that precise fitment. So that's why it's better to have this panel in place. And then when you flip it over, it will be easier to insert the side panel. So that's why we do it this way, not vice versa. And I think it will make it easier and overall process will be a bit more streamlined. So let's try to glue these two panels inside the turret. So I decided to show another interesting thing. Here you can see that this side panel goes inside. And note that this small raised edge, it will keep the panel in the right place. So I was worried that it be, as you can see, slides here and there, but actually it holds with this edge. So that gives you the right placement of this part. And this is quite a nice design. I mean, it's simple solution, but it works as you can see, and it will make it a overall fitment in the right way. Here is another tricky thing. So as usual, Minard supplies the small railings which will be placed on the side of the turret here, you can see it. And of course we have the attachment point in the middle here, you can see it left here, I cut it off because I was trying a bit dif uh, different method of the separation. But oh no, I would rather recommend to replace it completely with a metal wire because it will provide you with a bit, uh, I would say, more realistic appearance and it would look better on your model. Here you can see I don't have other option because as you remember, I'm working with a standard tools and I'm building the out of the box version. And also do not forget that these drilled holes, they will be used in order to insert these railings. Otherwise you won't be able to insert them in the right spots. So pay attention to that and definitely do not forget to drill the right holes because otherwise it will be a bit difficult task to do. Here you can see the final version of the turret. We applied this uh, PE cover for the uh, mantle cover. 
But I did not apply all the P brackets because it's a bit tedious to do without the special tools. Moreover, as you can see, I spilled a bit of CA glue on the top of the turret. Well, it's also the consequence of not having the right tools, but you can see that overall turret looks really good. And now we can place it on the hull and whole build will be almost complete. So assembly continues and as you remember there was a step where you have to place the spare tracks on the glacis plate. So here are the spare tracks. It is quite interesting that you have to use the standard parts. It's not something different from the kit. But these three sections there are different because you have the guiding elements on the opposite side. It will help you to place them properly. Just do not forget to drill the holes. As you can see you have to glue them first because otherwise it will be a bit difficult to combine them together but other than that they were quite convincing i mean these are just actual tracks which are used on the whole tank and as you can see we even have the casting marks which look quite nice but they won't be visible on the finished state here we go with assembling the drivetrain and it's quite interesting because these idlers as you can see they should have some guiding elements in order to align them together but in reality they do not have as you can see it's just a I would say shovel tab so you will have to be careful while joining them together so that these circles are aligned between each other they are aligned between each other on the real vehicle and maybe it would be a wise idea to insert something into this circle so that both discs will be in the same position I would say and it will be easier to glue them in place and don't forget that there is also a front cap which will be installed separately we have it here on the sprue but that's not as difficult as these two assembly right now for assembling tracks you will have to combine 36 parts of each type as you can see this one is uh, given on the separate sprue and here you can see the main difference we have these teeth while the other sprue is provided without the teeth but still we get quite nice details as I said before when we were fixing the spare tracks so now we will try to combine these two frame sets with say parts from each frame together and see what it will be once glued together. So here we have the final shape of this kit, you can see it looks quite nice and I would say the overall assembly was not that complicated as I was expecting it to be. I mean, yes, there are some skills required and as you remember I was building it with the basic tools but still it was quite an easy process and here for example you can see the tracks. With the tracks I have this issue but maybe it's because I did not count the links to be honest so maybe that's why. Also this uh, P thread mesh is not that difficult to assemble so that's why I recommend you not to be afraid. And by the way here you can see also a small gap in the engine bay area. I think maybe it is because I aligned um, the hull panels in a bit wrong way so maybe that's why. Again I remind you that I was assembling it with the basic tools. It's basically the plastic cutter. Uh, the knife and also the uh, metal rod as you remember for making the holes which you can see here but that was pretty much all so that's why um, I would say it's not as detailed as it could be and I think with my standard tool set it would be even better but still it is quite nice model I would recommend it and as you remember if I remove for example this turret you can see I have the spare tracks there some extra parts there but still we have some interior bits as well so that's why you can replicate for example all the hatches open as I did here and for example here you can see that driver hatch is also featuring some handles and other stuff so that's really cool thing to see out of the box in 135 scale and this is it for this build I hope you enjoyed it as much as me and stay tuned for new projects we will build other models but this time I hope it will be a full detailed build not the basic one to see the quality of the kit so thank you for joining and stay tuned